Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment in my Emacs for Writers series. In this video, we're going to define what an extensible text editor is and how Emacs is like a living environment for manipulating text on your screen. If that sounds like something you're into, stay tuned because we're about to get into it. Before we get started, I will mention that this educational video series is based on my Emacs for Writers handbook, which you can download as a PDF or EPUB ebook formatted file linked in the description below if you want to follow along with the text. I've also provided links where you can follow me on X and Facebook, where I cross post my video content and other content specifically for those platforms. So thank you. On with the video. Now some key concepts we will be discussing here in Unit 2 of Emacs for Writers include Emacs as an extensible text editor. And what does that even mean? A live environment for text manipulation and open source and free software. Extensible is sort of a buzzword in the open source software ecosystem, but in practical terms, it means your Emacs text editor really can be made all yours. You can change just about everything in the interface, which often means extending the base functionality to meet your needs. And you can do this by configuring Emacs with additional code via a programming language called Emacs Lisp. But if you don't like to code or don't know how to, you can still customize every aspect of Emacs using an internal customization interface as well. But believe me, I'm no coder, and I have managed to use Emacs Lisp quite proficiently over the years to extend the hell out of my Emacs configuration. And now with AI language models to assist you, the sky is really the limit with how far you can customize Emacs. Live environment for text manipulation. So another important concept in Emacs is the idea of buffers for text manipulation. So what is a buffer? It's like a layer between you and something else, right? When you're editing a file in Emacs, you're not editing the file directly. You first edit a buffer, and then once you've made changes, you can save the edited buffer contents to the file. But you may be wondering, what is the point of that buffer? Why have a layer separate from the text itself? Because Emacs can use buffers for all kinds of things, not just editing text. Buffers can be created on the fly to display text information, for example. Let this sink in for a moment. Let's say you're editing some text and you have a function that will give you additional information about the text. Emacs can open a separate buffer to print out that text information. It can tell you, for example, how many words are in your document, how many paragraphs, how many sentences per paragraph, how many words per sentence, etc. It can analyze your text for certain keywords, for SEO optimization, for example. If you wanted Emacs to open up a temporary buffer with a dancing baby GIF, it can do that. In fact, you'll find that there are lots of things you can do in Emacs buffers that go beyond simply text editing. And this is part of the fun of Emacs and also the potential for how it can change how you work. You have also heard, surely, that Emacs is free and open source software. Free means you can download it for free and install it on your computer. It's also free in the sense that you are free to change any aspect of the program you want. Beyond your own personal configuration, you can actually change the source code itself if you know what you're doing. This is what is meant by the term open source. You can view and manipulate the source code to make the program do pretty much anything you want. But you'll probably never need to do that. Your personal configuration and extended functionality should be enough. Open source also means the project is developed by a community of software engineers all over the world, making improvements and keeping the code up to date. This means you can be quite sure that as long as the project stays active, you will always be able to get upgraded software for free. And if the project should one day go away, you will not lose what you have. No expired software licenses to worry about. That's it for this video. In the next unit, we will learn about the Emacs frame, an important concept. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Be sure to like the video and subscribe and share this one with someone who you think might get some value out of it as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.